All right, everyone. So here is the tutorial on the really cool image I created earlier today. Now, I had done that image this morning. For those of you that saw it on Facebook, it was a really cool um, idea that just really came out of nowhere and just really kind of evolved into um, what it was. And what that's what's really fun about exercises like this is that you go in to an image with no real idea or agenda. Just kind of start playing with something and see where it takes you. And, and one idea leads to another and then another, and then you just end up with something that you didn't even plan on. And you really kind of surprise yourself in the end, which is kind of a, a fun thing about being an artist is that you get to discover things. So what I did was I was looking around this stock image site, Dollar Photo Club. You should check it out. It's dollarphotoclub.com. They got a lot of really cool stuff on there, very affordable images as well. And I stumbled upon this image here, and I liked it because it had really interesting things going on. It's got the uh, interesting kind of sy symmetry to it, the, the lighting and the, the fog. It really had an interesting, ominous feel to it. But in and of itself, it's really impressive, but it wasn't enough for me. I wanted to add something to it that would really kind of add some contrast and really kind of make you look at it and go, huh, that's interesting. And I thought about a door. I wanted to put a doorway right in the middle of this um, dirt road because it's something you wouldn't expect to see in the middle of this scene. And then one thing led to another, and it just evolved into something really interesting. So we're going to explore that right now. So I'm going to start by going and getting my rectangular marquee tool. And before I do that, actually, I'm going to make I'm going to make the image a little bit darker. So I'm simply going to make a duplicate layer. I'm going to press Command or Control J, and that brings the background to a new um, or copies it to a new layer. And I'm going to go ahead and change the blend mode of this to multiply, and it makes the, over, the overall scene much much darker. But I am going to drop the opacity of that layer just a little bit to 75%, so it's a little less intense there. There we go. Now, going to go and get the rectangular marquee tool, and we're going to create the kind of uh, back wall of the scene we're going to create here. So I'm just going to go up here to the top of my image, and we'll go right about here, and just draw out a box, and something like this. That's going to be the back wall of our image. Now, notice I'm still selected on the layer that I made a duplicate of and changed to multiply. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to copy the selected area of that layer to a new layer by pressing Command J. Now, because it was also in multiply mode, the duplicate I've created is also going to be in multiply mode, thus making the image much darker, but only in that selected area. So it looks like it's kind of an interesting back wall here. So we're going to add to that by adding some dimension with some uh, simple lines. So I'm going to command click on that layer and reload the selection around that shape. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new blank layer. And then we're going to go under the edit menu and go down here to stroke. And inside here, I'm going to ch um, choose a color. I'm actually going to sample kind of a dark shadowy color from the image itself, this kind of dark blue here, and click OK. <clears throat> I'm going to leave the width set to two pixels, and we'll leave the location inside, and uh, everything else is okay, and we'll click okay. So now we get a little bit more defining of the shape there. Now I'm going to go ahead and get the rectangle, or actually no, in the shape tools, I want to get the line tool right here. And up in the options bar, make sure it's set to pixels. I don't want it to draw a vector shape, but rather just a simple pixel line. And I'm going to set the weight to two pixels. Now I'm going to draw out lines from each of the corners and going roughly to the corners of the image here. I'm just going to, not going precisely to the corners, but just kind of giving it an idea and using the perspective of the scene as well to draw out the shape and get the, um, the look of that room kind of in place there. There we go. Let's just draw this one out here. So there we go. So I turn off all the layers. You can see what we've got here is just some lines drawn out there. All right, so we'll come back to these other elements in a moment. Let's go ahead and add the door that's going to be uh, central to the... Um, the overall scene here. And uh, I have another image here that, again, I got from the Dollar Photo Club, and it's this green door here. Not worried about the color, I just like the way the door looked and the way it was open. So we're going to change a lot of the um, different aspects of the door, but we first need to extract it from the background. So I'm just going to get the Magic Wand tool. Since this image is on a solid white background, I'm simply going to just select the background with the Magic Wand tool. Since it's mostly a solid color, I'm just going to add a few extra elements there in the bottom. And then we'll go to simply choose select and choose inverse. And I'm going to go and click on the refine edge button right here and 
we can see that it's pretty clean selection. I'm actually going to use the Refine Radius tool to clean up the bottom areas where the shadows and things are here and nudge that contrast up a little bit and I think we look pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and set this to New Layer, click OK, and then we're nicely extracted on the background there. So before I bring it over to the main image, I'm actually going to go ahead and just take the color out of this by pressing Shift-Command-U and it goes ahead and desaturates the image. So let's go ahead and drag and drop the door on over and let's scale it to fit in the scene here. So we'll actually just zoom in here a little bit and let's scale this down. Let's get it almost to scale, but not quite because it's not quite reality, is it? So, all right, I'm gonna position this just above the edge of this uh, doorway here is right there. There we go. Now, um, let's go ahead and just take clean up the edges of this extracted door by going into the layer menu and going over to matting and choosing the fringe. Now I'm gonna leave the width set to one and click okay. And you can see it cleans up any of that anti-aliasing edging around the door there, it looks pretty good. All right, so now let's create a new layer and place it underneath the active layer. You can do that by simply holding down the command or control key and clicking on the new layer there. And I'm going to go ahead and get the rectangular marquee tool, draw out a box behind the door, right like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and give this a white fill. It's going to give us a kind of indication that there's kind of some kind of white light behind the door. But we need to add a few more things to really sell that effect there. Before I do that, I'm actually going to go and select the layer containing all those stroked lines and erase this little area under the door here. Let's just get that out of there, there we go. That looks pretty good, okay. Just adjusting some positioning here. Okay, so now we have the shape, this white shape behind the shape of the door here. Now I wanna make an active selection of the door itself by command clicking right on that layer, loads the overall shape as an active selection. Now I wanna select the negative area of the door where we see that white section right there. So I'm gonna select inverse, and then with that layer containing the white fill selected, simply press Command J. Now that selected area is on an, its own layer and there's what it looks like. So it's that simply extracted. Now, missing another part of this door. So I'm actually gonna undo that and go back to the door itself because I want to see the light through this area here um, on the um, right side of the door there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that magic wand tool again, and this time drop the tolerance to around five, and then click, oh, right on the area of the door here. Let's just do right there, huh? Smaller sample there, there we go, there we go. So I'm gonna hit delete, and now we can see out the edges there, and let's just clean up this side over here a little bit. So now we can see that glow. Now I'm gonna load the shape of that door and the doorway as a selection, command clicking on the layer, reselecting the, the layer with the white fill, pressing command J. And I'm gonna bring that area, actually no, I forgot to inverse it, didn't I? So again, so re activating the selecting of the door and then inversing the selection, then pressing command J. So this is what we should end up with, is that shape right there, there it is. All right. So I'm gonna put that layer above the door layer itself, at the very top of the layer stack. And then we're gonna to go to the filter menu, go to blur and choose Gaussian blur. And you can see about a seven pixel blur gives it a nice uh, glow around the door there. That looks pretty good. And we'll go with that. Okay. Now, I'm gonna do that same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and command click on the door again itself and make another copy of that negative space area, there it is. And I'm gonna go to the edit menu, go to transform and choose flip vertical. Now we're gonna drag this down because this is going to be the light being cast on the ground by the light coming through the door. So with it, with it flipped and put in there, I'm gonna put it in free transform and choose perspective. Just con control or right click right on the object and choose perspective here. And then we're just gonna grab a corner and then bring this out. So the light is really kind of pouring out of the uh, the doorway right there, and that looks pretty good. Now, I'm gonna add a little bit more light to this by just adding another, filling in a little bit more of the light here because I, I feel like there should be more light kind of piercing through here like that. 
Now, I want to get a kind of realistic fade on this um, light that's shining on the ground here. It would be softer the closer it is to us, and it gets sharper as it gets closer to the source. So we're going to make a selection via a gradient. So I'm going to go over here and select my gradient tool. Make sure that black is set as my foreground color, and I'm going to press Q to go into quick mask mode. And I'm going to draw a gradient up from the bottom up to the top here, and you can see the, the orange overlay is indicating where my selected pixels are versus my unselected pixels. This is basically a visual aid to getting a gradient selection here. So I'm going to draw that right about there. Press Q again, reactivates the selection, and then we're going to do a blur. I'm going to go to, to the blur again, Gaussian blur, and we're going to give it a crazy amount of blur this time. Go up to around 50. And notice what it's doing. It's getting nice blur around here, but not so much blur as it gets closer into the door there. So let's actually drop this to around 45, something like that. There we go. And then we're going to change the blend mode of this to overlay. So it blends in with the, um, the street a little bit more. The light's coming through. It's, it's looking real, much, much better. But I'm going to duplicate that layer. And it intensifies the brightness, but we're going to go to Edit, Transform, and choose Skew. And just going to nudge this over just a little bit so we get the illusion that there's kind of multiple beams of light kind of shining through here. And I'm even going to put a little bit of a blur on this, not nearly as much as the last one. Let's do, but I'm doing an overall blur on this one. Let's do about a three pixel blur on that one. There we go. So there we have our light kind of pouring out of the door and pouring onto the scene here. Kind of cool. All right. So I'm going to put a little bit of a blur on that original shape that's in the background behind the door there. So I'm going to put a little bit of a Gaussian blur on that one so it's got the light kind of piercing at the bottom here. Notice the difference there. It's got a straight edge and then it's got it's kind of blending a little bit better. There we go. Now, go back up and reselect the um, layer containing the original door. And I'm going to give it a little bit of a contrast boost here and I'm going to add a color to it. Simply press Command or Control U and I'm going to turn on Colorize. And I want to move this to the red because I want it to be a nice dark red door and give it some good saturation there. And uh, I think that looks pretty good. So we'll click OK there. Now I'm going to make a duplicate of this layer. Press Command J and then desaturate the layer. Just uh, Shift Command U desaturates it and then change that blend mode to multiply. Darkens the door. It really helps it fit in the scene better, yet we're, main, we're able to maintain a good amount of that red in there without it being too bright just like that. So it helps it kind of uh, blend in the scene a little bit more. And notice I changed the blend mode to multiply. I also dropped the opacity to around 75%. makes it a little less intense there. Now one last thing I'm going to add to this um, layer for of uh, the door is a little bit of a selection right in here inside the door area because I'm going to add a new layer between the two layers of the doors and add a simple gradient, just a white gradient, just to help have it some light kind of pour through or kind of coming out of this doorway and pouring onto the doorway like that. There we go, something like that. And we'll change that to overlay so it makes it a little bit brighter there. There we go. All right. So I'm going to reselect that layer that contains that blurred element. I'm going to duplicate that, give it a little bit more enhanced glow. I'm going to drop the opacity a little bit there. There we go. So there we have our light coming out of the doorway there. And I can certainly play around with uh, different enhancements and elements like that, but hopefully you get the idea. So now let's go back to the layer that contains the lines that define the overall space here. Because we're going to go and use our magic wand tool again and make selections of those different areas. So for this panel here, I'm going to make a selection there. Reselect the original layer or the layer just above it. Command J copies that selected area to a new layer and I'm simply going to change the blend mode to screen and drop the opacity down to around 25. And then we'll do the same thing. I'm going to reselect that layer containing the lines again. We'll select this layer over here. Command J. I'm going to, again, set this one to screen and drop it down a little bit. 
So we're just getting varying tones on each wall of the scene here, just so it helps define it a little bit better. Because you, so you're getting simultaneously a sense of space outside, but you're also sen sensing that confinement that you're in a room with the, the, the lit doorway right here and everything. Now, the one last thing I'm going to do here is go to the very top and create a new layer at the very, very top. And using the gradient tool, once again, I'm going to use a radial gradient, white to transparent, and just start on the outside here and drag down. And it's going to help enhance the lighting of the scene by changing the blend mode from normal to overlay. And then draw out the opacity a little bit there. And there we ultimately have it. Now, the lines are a little bit more defined now. So just going to go and select that layer and run a very small blur on the lines themselves. Let's do about a two pixel. Eh, that's even still too much. Let's do a one pixel blur on that. And then put a layer mask on that layer containing the lines. And if you go and get that radial gradient again and drop the opacity to around 70% or something like that, and just at random places go in and just mask away a little bit of that line. So there's still a hint of it there, but yet there's still enough there to define the scene, but a little bit left, a little bit of it's gone, enough to help sell the scene overall. Let's drop the opacity of that back wall just a little bit more. And this is part of the experimenting. As you go in and you try something, you see how it works, see how it looks, and you try different things, try different opacities, try different levels, try different blend modes. And ultimately, you'll end up with something that's much more interesting than what you originally started with. So... Just a matter of going in there and playing around with different scenarios and seeing what kind of things you can come up with. But here you have an interesting way of making an indoor-outdoor scene with just a couple of images and a few layer tricks. Pretty cool stuff. All right, so um, give, us, give it a try yourself. Hope you can come up with something rather interesting. By all means, post it and share it and would love to see it. We'll see you guys next time.